here I have a test tube containing one of the natural products we just purified using the HPLC. You might notice that there's not actually that much to see. That's because we've only isolated a very tiny amount of the natural products. Essentially, living organisms only ever produce very small amounts of each natural product, sometimes just microgram to milligram amounts. Our next step is to figure out what our natural product actually looks like. Figuring out its structure gives us a lot of important information, such as whether it is the same or different than other natural products. It gives us an idea on what its function could possibly be. And it also gives us ideas on what diseases it could potentially treat if we were able to develop it into a drug. But how do we figure out what our natural product looks like, given that we can't even see it with our eyes? The main technique we use to do this is known as Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy, or NMR for short. This is an NMR machine. It consists of large superconducting magnets, robotics and an energy source. The NMR is filled with liquid nitrogen and helium to keep the magnets cold. We drop the sample of our natural product right into the centre of the magnets in order to analyse it. Essentially, natural products, like any compound, are never still. They jiggle and tumble around in space. The huge magnets in the NMR hold our natural product in place in a certain orientation so we can examine it more closely. We then send a radio pulse at the natural product, causing it to react, and then we record, we record its response. From that process, we can collect a wide range of different graphs that tell us different things about our natural product. Here are some examples of those graphs. Interpreting them can be tricky, but it's a lot like doing a puzzle where I bring together all the different bits of information the graphs are telling me to figure out what my natural product looks like. In particular, NMR tells us about the carbon and hydrogen atoms making up our natural products and how they're all connected together. I can then draw a representation of our natural product, which is what I have done here. Many of you may think that scientists have to be very logical to do tasks such as this, but actually, I need to use a lot of my creativity skills to, con to consider my options and come up with innovative solutions to figuring out the problem of, of constructing what my natural product looks like. It is tasks such as this that are also the reason why I needed to go to university to become a natural products chemist. During my university studies, I learned a number of skills that now allow me to complete complex tasks such as this.